Okay, very good morning to you. Hope you are well. Tuesday 30th of July, getting straight into the briefing. And as you can see, probably the main topic is some further downside in the British pound seen overnight. Cable has briefly touched in the futures space around 121.50 as Boris Johnson issues his ultimatum to the EU over Brexit talks as pound slumps. Very much a coordinated approach, of course, that we saw yesterday from Dominic Rabb to Michael Gove, Sajid Javid and his planning as well for the amount of money they're going to be spending in preparation for a no deal. And so really that's the, the main story of the morning. If we quickly flick over to the chart uh, overnight during the Asia Pacific session, you know, the cable pair really has broke down further after what had been a pretty sizable downward move as Europe came into the market yesterday. Uh, this was the price activity from yesterday and then we kind of consolidated here but you could see the the shallowness of those pullbacks on the retest of around that support level and when that gave way which was uh, during the really the beginning of the Asian session then we had another push down uh, quite aggressively to the downside and if we look at the daily continuation chart you know this is exactly the levels that Sam and I were looking at yesterday we're kind of talking that now we were through that quite critical point of technical support uh, given the fundamental view that you know Boris really is just doing exactly what we had thought which is really talking up this aggressive stance on the real credible threat on do or die no deal and so therefore with the the fact that there's not a lot of technical support there we've run all the way down to test pretty much at where we were saying at 34 which would be those previous lows that we had printed back in you know, March of 2017. Downside then, the real, this is that kind of support area, with the lower bound being that double bottom that we had initially right after the EU referendum itself in the months thereafter. This is when, if you remember, the catalyst for that run lower here was when Theresa May first uttered the words hard Brexit in the Conservative Party conference at the beginning of October that initiated that breach then of that previous post-referendum low and we had that retest in the beginning of 2017 so right back there at the moment and I think personally unsurprisingly so irrespective of the fact that I still don't think no deal is going to happen uh, again just to explain my thoughts behind that I do, do think this is purely political posturing by Boris all gearing up for a sending a bit of a signal uh, to Europe sure but more really trying to resonate with the growing dissatisfaction of the broader national public about the state of this Brexit negotiation under May's leadership um, I think he's talking to farmers in Wales today but he's been doing definitely the tour of the uh, the more leave minded areas and as such then lining up this general election the one thing I would say is that if the strategy is for power and, and Boris Johnson does call a general election and gets a better composition a, a larger majority in Parliament don't forget the last thing he wants then if he seals in that premiership under a new mandate is a, is a no deal he definitely wouldn't want that because then he is the Prime Minister for the next five years and God forbid he'd have to deal with a no deal situation. So again, a lot of this is all politics rather than I think actual uh, credible uh, idea that we're gonna have this no deal. I still think that's not gonna happen. Um, but regardless of that, in the short term though, the market has to respond to the idea that um, no deal, if you like, I guess I'm talking more in my explanation of the medium term political kind of path that we're going down. But in the interim period, obviously, the pound has to reprice for the risks on the table. And given the technical breaches of key levels, hence the reason why you get such a, a quick run to the downside. I mean, we've basically gone a good three points in the, in the case of a day. Uh, this would really be the telling area, though. And again, this 120 to 121 handle, if that breaks... Well, I mean, I'll let Sam go over that in a bit more detail, but then certainly that would be significant. And whether or not we could, you know, given the status now that we re repriced essentially on two different occasions, really this was the, the Boris 
coming in on the nomination, uh, on the fact that really he had no credible opposition in that Tory leadership race, and now down to where we are at the moment. So if you think about it, Boris Johnson priced in. We've now basically moved from about a 134 handle, from around here, 132 handle, all the way down to 120. So he's taken a good 12 points out of the pound uh, with his posturing at the moment. Perhaps that's fair value for the moment. We shall see. But yeah, other than that, really, the market is fairly, fairly tame. Just seeing the Nasdaq future here printing a fresh low, just testing close to its pivot level. Likewise in the S&P, as the DAX has come under a little bit of downside pressure. It's been a couple of earnings reports this morning. Um, just to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the percentage movers, Lufthansa uh, in Germany down about 2.8%. However, seeing BP are up 3.2%. Rekit Benkiza, on the other hand, are down 6.4%. And Centrica in the FTSE down 8.6%. So pretty hefty losses there for the latter. So pretty mixed with the earnings perspective this morning. Otherwise, elsewhere, um, looking at WCI crude oil moving a little higher this morning. Nothing really new to report on the Iranian front or anything in the Persian Gulf uh, in that regard. And fixed income markets are essentially flat this morning. There's a slight bid scene in gold prices, having just retested the overnight uh, or getting up to testing the overnight Asia Pacific high level that we printed in the futures here around the 38 mark. Um, just going back then, really, uh, as I said, not much in the way of new breaking news that's really going to shift things this morning. Overall, then, probably be more inclined to be looking at the technical setup of the charts. Um, with the pound, definitely some of those downside levels that need uh, watching for the rest of today. But I think given the size of yesterday's move and the one seen overnight, maybe um, a little bit of a pullback before then the next push down to retest those lower bound levels could could be on the cards um, the other thing that happened overnight and the Japanese yen if anything um, actually strengthened rather than re weakened because there obviously was a few outside bets that potentially the Bank of Japan could have done something more more with easing but essentially they stood pat the Bank of Japan kept its monetary policy unchanged while trimming its inflation forecast uh, taking a bit of a wait and see approach given the fact that we've got the Federal Reserve coming on Wednesday uh, to see what they have to say, perhaps given how, as we've said before, how dovishly priced the market is, if the Fed don't really commit, of course, they'll cut rates. If they cut 25, though, and aren't so explicit with um, further easing to come, if that strengthens the dollar, then by default that will weaken the yen. And so it kind of plays into the BOJ's hands. So perhaps they're they're taking the option of just waiting and seeing what they have to say because they've obviously got the flexibility that they could always come out through their central bankers and, and, and rearm um, market participants with new forward guidance if necessary through speeches. Um, the quarterly outlook report from the BOJ, they said risk to inflation and economic activity are both skewed to the downside with the latter due particularly to developments seen overseas and uh, of course that including protectionism coming out of the United States of America. So no real uh, great movement seen on the back of that. As I said, if anything, maybe a little bit of unwinding of those who are potentially looking at outside bets of, of easing action of the BOJ and were slightly disappointed by the fact that nothing happened. Um, otherwise, calendar, um, just going back to the weekly snapshot, um, US Trade Representative Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin um, obviously commenced their first of two days of talks face to face with their Chinese counterparts over trying to move this idea of, uh, of the trade negotiation forward. However, state media again repeating overnight, uh, trying to dampen expectations here, lower the bar, suggesting that really there's going to be very little concrete outcome out of these talks, which has been our baseline scenario. Uh, as discussed in the, the briefing on Monday, really what the Chinese want, the, China, uh, the, the Americans are not going to give. And so I'd very much expect then potentially a little bit of a, of a downside risk factor to this, um, i.e. there's complete loggerheads. But I would say that really what we're lining up here is just the um, commitment to keep on talking, to keep the dialogue going uh, would be my, my expectation. So given the fact that they're in China, uh, in Shanghai, um, the time difference being, what, eight hours or so, 
meaning that really we need to start looking out for comments as we're getting towards the late morning, I suggest, for any potential updates. The usual, keep an eye on Trump Twitter feed and also that Chinese journalist of the, the, the state media as well for any breaking developments there. Uh, otherwise, on the earnings front, a um, few things to look out for pre-market, Procter & Gamble, Merck, Pfizer, probably the biggest of the pre-market names. And of course, you've got the tech giant Apple after market. Uh, their earnings per share expected at $2.10, revenues at $53.36 billion. That's the expectations. Uh, analysts, of course, will look at the iPhone uh, sales for revenue um, as well as their services division is going to be the two key things. Obviously, they're pivoting away from such reliance uh, being one-dimensional from the iPhone. Remember as well, they've stopped listing their specific iPhone unit sale number, so we've got to derive that out of the actual revenue figure itself going forward now. Um, but again, the company trying to move away from that into services, which includes the App Store, uh, Apple Music, iCloud, Apple Care, and the Apple News Plus subscription service, which is just coming on to the market. And we've also got things like their streaming services uh, as competitors for like Netflix and uh, Disney for, and so on. So yeah, probably Apple aftermarket uh, will be quite interesting. Uh, China, of course, will also be a major focus for investors as growth there has been has been difficult, just given the aforementioned trade war situation. So uh, slow down potentially in the Asia Pacific region, predominantly out of China. The performance of the service industry and does, does that the service products, I should say, and does that continue to grow, taking away the emphasis from the iPhone? And how does that la latter product also stand up on the revenue figure? Is what I'd be looking for from Apple today. Um, Calendar-wise, what have we got? Well, we've already had the first of the German state CPIs. Saxony came in at 0.4% against previous 0.5. Uh, the year-on-year 1.6 against 1.8. So as you can see, no real reaction, and quite rightly so, in the likes of European assets. Those data points, not surprising really in any way. We'll get the, the rest of the German state CPIs littered through the morning. Uh, Brandenburg, Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria, and the rest. The pan-German figure not due until uh, 1 o'clock, but we'll be expecting that if it follows suit from Saxony to be a bit of a, a non-market mover. Uh, 10 o'clock, some Eurozone data. Um, these are the various business climate and sentiment figures. Very rarely do they move the market, so I wouldn't really factor that in as much a consideration for, for a catalyst for price movement. So really, it's not until we get into the US afternoon. So aside from any trade updates from those talks going on in in Shanghai. Uh, from a US data perspective, you've got the port core PCE numbers, uh, personal income uh, figure to look out for. These were coming up 1.30. US consumer confidence at 3 p.m. London, and then the API all inventory is not until the evening as per usual. Um, and that's pretty much it. Not really too much more for me to mention. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to uh, Mr. North, and he can look over the charts from a, a, a technical perspective. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you, Mr. Chunk. Uh, what better place again to start with than uh, the pound? They're not looking too good this morning. We'll start more intraday and just have a, a look back at yesterday. You can see pretty much all down uh, from from the morning. Uh, I guess. The S1 or the previous low of the day, which is coming in around 91 of the futures, would would be a, a place people would potentially look to go short. The risk reward of that, I guess, if you're looking at the low of the day, isn't the worst trade in the world. But I do agree with Ant that we, you know, wouldn't be too surprised to see a bit of a recovery before we then maybe did push higher. So while I think it's not the worst trade in the world uh, going short on previous low, uh, if we could get any uh, retracement higher, that would be more favourable and, and looking just where we are and putting this now onto to the weekly chart, let's get rid of the, the pivots just to clear it up and you can see uh, just how low the price is now and that trend line that we broke through the beginning of the week that never really came back to get retested uh, and that would be some move for, for that to happen any time uh, from now. Just below where we're, we're trading or the low of the day, 21.31 in the futures, you're looking at the the low from the 6th of March. So that's something that you know, people, uh, I'm sure, will have marked up. And you can see just how close we got to that point, uh, 16 ticks or so. So 
you know, going back to that, that weekly, that would be the, the next level people would, would focus on. And, and then if that doesn't hold them, suddenly you're looking at the, the post-Brexit low at pretty much bang on 120 uh, on the futures there. So for the pound, I would prioritise, you know, uh, previous levels of what acted as a bit of support uh, from yesterday uh, to, to get in. So maybe looking more to, to around 122.39. That does seem relatively far away for now. Uh, but we're just trading on that previous low of the day. So probably worth a little go uh, on here, but uh, I think if we can get it higher, that will be the uh, the priority there. Uh, having a look over Euro, uh, relatively choppy this morning. We uh, can find in that range we were talking about in the briefing yesterday with S1 and, uh, and what would have been yesterday's or Friday's highs and lows. You can see the S1 and... Uh, Friday's low were pretty much bang on and you know whether you could have taken this on at 8.15 or not uh, with Friday's high on the R1 because uh, it was quite late but you can see just how well that had worked uh, and those those ranges still obviously well intact today the pivot chopped through uh, quite a bit I know we've got some data probably worth having one of these trend lines on from the top you can see we're getting a level of support from the morning but the key level here is going to be uh, to the upside uh, yesterday's high 111.94 and a half and to the downside around 111.56 a relatively small range but uh, those are the key levels that people will certainly uh, be looking at uh, having a look over uh, at uh, well stocks because we can just see here on the open uh, a further push down in, in the DAX and we had just before the open I was just looking at this before coming on that we had broken through uh, this trend line uh, retested it already so just before eight o'clock you can see 15 minutes before we did break down and we're just having another test of that low of the day which is key we've got all this support point from yesterday afternoon and and in turn if that was to go then maybe uh, you're going to get a further breakdown in S&P which you can see is starting to happen here we had some support on the pivot uh, from this trend line starting at a similar time to the DAX and that's just trying to drift lower here a bit of support on the futures uh, 30.19 the just below we're trading but we're keeping an eye on the DAX to, to really lead the way here uh, gold and oil to, to wrap things uh, you can see relatively range bound as well for, for oil you can see we didn't quite get down in the morning session to the S1 and overnight broke through that R1 and, and Friday's high um, we still haven't got a, a test of that longer term trend line uh, to come back and that looks like it will be coming in around the R1 which is also that key point uh, 1440 uh, and I guess really depends where you look at it 1444 those previous highs from uh, the last few sessions so that would be somewhere to have marked up for sure around the R1 uh, for afternoon's high is this morning's low so that's a, a key point as well you can see we're just relatively choppy around where we're, we're trading now uh, we did try to make a new high or we briefly did make a new high for the day uh, but the first few tests of that holding quite well so mini range in gold worth probably waiting for for the break either way in that oil pushed higher end of the session yesterday we we had a decent break early uh, in the session if i just draw this trend line on it wasn't you know, i suppose it was quite choppy really the trend line but once that had broken through retest and went higher and even acted as some support later on uh, post uh, three o'clock and we have drifted on since then obviously levels to be aware of to, to the upside around 57.64 yesterday of last week's high i should say and then there's a lot of support which held price from yesterday thursday and friday uh, a long way down but 55 79 area 80 area somewhere i'll be focusing on a bit closer to home looking at uh, the resistance from the 25th which did break through yesterday and retest around 56 dollars uh, going shorter term mm. i mean we'd have just had this this breakthrough i'll be keeping an eye on what happens on the retest again of this trend line and all the first retest after wow. breaking acted really well but keep an eye here 57.20 uh, for oil on how that reacts quick look over the dax again just to see if we are getting a follow through in, in us equities you can see trying to now break and confirming that break of yesterday's low next sort of level for the dax where you got some from thursday and uh, and wednesday as well so a fair bit of support to go but in early morning trade equities just coming under uh, a bit of pressure 
would prioritize uh, a move higher in the pound to then get short um, if we can uh, given just the, the extent of, of the move lower yesterday any questions as usual uh, please do let us know uh, but if not I hope you will have a, a great trading day